Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode of the vlogs today as we go into the club we're gonna go and do weights first thing and then we're gonna get on the water back in the learn to rope here with Robson since he's floating around the club and I am a bow sider he is a stroke sider or I am a starboard he is a port for the American viewers out there but first things first we've got to take care of Jan make sure he's all ready to go and then get into the weights room and we're talking a little bit about pears rowing tips today as Yam tries to bite my knee. No Yam, no biting the knee. But tips for rowing in the pear. I'll see if we can get some of the guys to give their tips as Robson and Joe come in from their morning session in the pear. It's very windy today so we'll see. Maybe that can be one of the tips about rowing in different weather but as I spoke a little bit about yesterday it can always be difficult rowing with different people you have to adjust for different people and that's one of the biggest things about rowing a pair compromising to make the boat as fast as possible not just doing whatever you like and then hoping the other person has to follow you making decisions together as a boat as a two-person one-man boat science but first things first let's go and get some weights done are you into the crew room to fuel up post weight session with some breaded egg toast because remember food is fuel and another tip for rowing the pair since there's only two of you it can be really easy to communicate between the two of you what you want and how you want to row so sitting down or just before you're in the boat or while you're just about to row off paddle off in the water you can discuss okay how do we want to row there are so many different ways to row a boat. You can sort of pause around the back end, you can have a faster recovery, slower recovery, be really quick around the back end, or many different ways, and everyone kind of has their own approach to the rowing stroke. But as long as you can have the same idea and you want to do the same thing as your pair partner, and this obviously applies to all crew boats, but if you can have that idea together, say, okay, we're gonna gather at, say, the quarter slide and then go from there not not pause but we're going to make sure we're both at the same point at quarter slide then that could make a big difference or it could be we're going to slow around the back gather and then go from there but like i said there's so many ways to approach the rowing stroke and finding one that works for you and your pair partner or whoever boat you're in can really make things a lot easier so then when it does get a bit twitchy or when there's a bunch of wash that comes through you can both kind of say okay let's reset and we'll go back to what that first main focus was to make it just a little bit more simple and a little bit easier to come together and unfortunately the wind has been picking up and the water has been getting worse it's one of those winds where it's pointing in a certain direction that makes the water pretty rubbish and a lot of boats on the water as well so it looks like we might be on the erg Joe and Robson were out this morning and the water was pretty bad and it looks like it's getting worse as well. So I'm going to hop onto the erg and see if anyone else has some tips for rowing the pair. Yeah, I'm here. Good boy. Come here. And we're out here trying to play fetch with Yam. He's getting the fetch definitely right as he's giving it back which is the problem. Need more treats for now, but there he is. Getting bigger, chewing a stick. Now let's get an egg.
Well, if you at uh, Robson, mm -hmm. we did an erg together there. It wasn't in the pair, unfortunately. It was in the pair that we can row. It was, was in, the pair. it was in the land-based <laughs> land to row pair. Um, tips for rowing the pair. So today I've, I've already said about like compromising. So what do you yeah, think yeah, is a good tip or tips for rowing the pair? Um, you've got to be a bit more sort of smooth with it, which I'm obviously very good at. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You can't just be as aggressive as you can in an eight. You can't sort of jump on it as much. Um, I'd say, yeah, the we said about compromise, but also just like communication. Mm -hmm. Like I think you've got to be really good at communicating with each other because there are so few of you in the boat. And quite often it's like, it, it, they, they either go well or they don't. Mm -hmm. like it, it, and it's one of those things that a good pair is one of the nicest things to row, but a bad pair is one of the worst things to row. And I think like if we're being honest, at one point last year the communication kind of broke down and we didn't really have a great time in it. And then it kind of, we had to build that back up to then like let the boats be developed with it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, looking back on it, that's something that we both learned massively. And that's like, I mentioned it earlier, not like, so compromise between two and your, like the communication also comes down to making sure like you could, I could say one thing to you and you could think it was something else. So uh, making sure, like I said earlier, it's making sure you're on the same page mm -hmm. as well. So like, and that comes to, down to good communication. Yeah. Like I always think like you can, like it's better to just be like over the top and just like get everything out on the table and talk about it too much than it is to just mm. like bottle it up and just be like. Yeah. Especially when you spent, like I said yesterday, um, that we spent the majority of the time in pairs. Like our everyone who is in a pair for trials spent mm -hmm. the majority of the time in the pair with that person for a few months at least. Yeah. Two months? Yeah. So there's a well, lot we of had, time. We had first trials and then we weren't yeah. again. Yeah, I think like that that for me is the main thing. Yeah. Is um is the communication. communication. I think um and yeah, just don't not slow the boat down. Don't slow the boat down. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not it's not it's like it's not necessarily about how much speed you can put in the boat, it's about how little you take out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good, very good. That's us especially. So the learn to row pair may take that in. Someone was asking yesterday about what we're doing, but we don't know. We know what we're, we know we're doing trials, or attempting trials, mm -hmm. but we don't know. The coaches kind of make most of the decisions and then we have a little bit of input. But now, Joe, tips on rowing a pair. Uh, I think we had a really good session this morning. We did. Um, I think just making it as easy as for the other person as possible. Kind of helping out the other person, even if it's not always making you feel more comfortable. Um, it probably comes more from the bow seat. So this morning, Robson was a bow, I was a stroke. Um, I think, like for him, trying to make it easy for me, then I can get comfortable, set up a rhythm, and then he can kind of gradually feel more comfortable. So it's up to the bow man to make it easy. Not always, <laughs> no, but it's like. You, like it comes with a compromise, that was Yeah, saying. but if you can make your stroke man feel comfortable setting a rhythm, then the bowman can get more comfortable. Whereas if the stroke man's constantly feeling uncomfortable, it's quite hard to get into any rhythm, I think. Because he's setting the rhythm. Yeah. All right, so there's some tips. And we've got Michelle over here as well. Michelle, how's your pair experience? Um, recently, I have been in a pair once, last nice. month. Do you have any tips for rowing a pair? Um, I like to row bow seat in a pair, and uh, I think bow seat should take all the blame. <laughs> so um, kind of what Joe was saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, stroke seat's always yeah. right, yeah. and it's flawless. Yeah, obviously. And uh, bow seat better uh, figure their figure their stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> so you heard it here, Joe and <laughs> Michelle. Have, wait, this is gonna move. Joe and Michelle blame the bow seat for everything. But now we're gonna continue to fuel up, watch a bit of the office, and chill out for the rest of the day. And I'll see you after fueling up. And we've made it outside of the club playing fetch on this beautiful day today, on this wonderful Friday at the end of the week. Hopefully all of you have had a great week so far and you can enjoy your weekends. Hopefully the weather stays like this for as long as possible because we all know 
when the sun's out, how big of a difference that can make just to even general mental well-being and how it feels and then we can get outside and rather than being stick, stuck indoors and being cold and being wet. But that will come eventually with the winter because winter is coming. But right now, trying to enjoy being outside as much as possible and Yam giving me plenty of opportunities to do that and we're working on our fetch. But as we work on our fetch, hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's video. A little bit of tips for rowing in the pair. Let me know in the comments below if you would like other tips on other things, whether rowing related, fitness related, workout related, or anything like that. But now, it's time to call it a day for the video. Hopefully again, you've enjoyed it. And as always, Yam Squad, remember to subscribe if you haven't already, hit that like button, and I'll see you tomorrow for I think it's going to be a 5 by one k with Joe and maybe a certain special guest. But we'll get to that tomorrow, so stay tuned. Oh, yeah.